Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship at St. Giles. We are so glad you're here, whether you're joining us in the sanctuary or online from Montreat perhaps today, or maybe at the beach, we are glad that you are with us. A few announcements um, this morning. If you are here in the building, immediately after worship today, as soon as the postlude concludes, we will show a three-minute video um, about what our communications team has been working on. So if you'd like to stay, you're invited not to leave after the postlude, but to sit right here for about three minutes. This evening at 5.30, we will have our um, family activity, a vacation Bible school evening. It will happen today regardless of weather. So we hope that we can be outside in the courtyard, but we may move inside to the Taylor Ed building, bring a picnic, and we may be sitting on the floor if it's stormy. But we hope that families will join us tonight. Next Sunday is going to be a really special day in worship. It's someone's baptism day, and if you haven't met him yet, you might be able to today. It's also um, next Sunday, Barbara Meese's final Sunday with us after 19 years of holding our babies. Barbara is going to retire. She said she's ready to sit with her husband in church uh, for a change. And so if you uh, would like to send Barbara a card or give her a gift, we'll have a basket here today and, of course, a basket next week. You're also welcome to send cards to the office, and we'll be sure to share them with Barbara. But um, we'll have a special moment in worship next week, but we'd be glad for you to help us celebrate her ministry here. Um, I finally want to add that we really want to have Sunday school for all ages this year, and we still need teachers for children and youth. We hope that we have enough teachers sign up that teachers would only teach once a month, so you'd have a team of people you'd be working with. We have families that really want to come. We do not have enough teachers. So if you would be willing to give one Sunday a month to teaching Sunday school, um, we can talk about what age would suit you best. Or if you know someone that you think would be good, talk to them and have them call us. Um, We're putting everything in order now. There are other announcements in your bulletin, online, and the e-news. I invite you to be attentive to those. But now let us um, prepare ourselves to worship God. So if you'll put your feet firmly on the floor and take a deep breath in and breathe out. And take a deep breath in and breathe out. As you breathe in, breathe in God's love. And as you breathe out, breathe out God's love for the world. Breathe in God's peace and breathe out God's peace for the world. To breathe in God's hope and breathe out God's hope for the world. As we breathe in and we breathe out, we pray that God would Bind us together in one body of faith, in one breath, as we confess one hope, one baptism, one faith, in one Lord, one God and Father who is above all and through all. Now you are invited to rise in body or in spirit. This morning, our call to worship will be done in alternating sides from this side of the sanctuary to this side of the sanctuary. And if you're joining us online, I invite you to choose alternating lines to read. This is a setting of the Lord's Prayer. So we begin, Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, who are in all the earth, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your truth. Thy kingdom come. May your wisdom come. Thy will be done. On earth your circle be one uniting, as it is in heaven, heaven and earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today a nurturing spirit. And forgive us our trespasses 
heal through us as we forgive those who trespass against us as we ourselves are healed. Lead us not into temptation, lead us into fullness of life, but deliver us from evil and liberate all that is good. For thine is the kingdom, for the wisdom, the power and the glory, presence and the goodness are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. With humility and great faith, let us turn to God, confessing our sin and the brokenness which separates us from God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. Although you are Lord of heaven and earth, we often act as though we are the ones we should honor and satisfy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience, fulfilling your will on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord's will is being worked out in heaven and on earth. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners because God wills that nothing separate us from God's love. Nothing in heaven or on earth, nothing in death or life, neither rulers nor other powers can oppress God's will for creation. Therefore, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are loved and forgiven and claimed from now and into eternity. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. Join me in the prayer for illumination. As we turn to God's Word, let us turn to God in prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first scripture reading today is Psalm 127. Listen now for the word of God to the people of God. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. So let me invite any children um, or um, young at heart to come and join me on the first pew this morning. Some of our friends have gone other places this morning, and so we miss them and we'll pray for them. Um, but it's still good that we can be here and be together, right? Haley says yes. Um, so let me ask you this, Haley. When you decide that you want something, maybe you have a favorite toy, a baby doll, or a piece of candy that you want, but someone else doesn't want you to have that, and then you don't get that, how does that make you feel? sad, makes you feel sad, that um, sometimes there are people who are bigger than you, who, mm -hmm, there are people who are bigger than you that get what they want, right? So maybe um, you happen to be the big sister, but there are some big brothers and big sisters who get what they want just because they're bigger, and probably in your house, your mom and dad, if they want something that's different from what you want, who usually gets what they want? I bet your mom and dad get what they want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your mom and dad get what they want. And why do they get what they want and you don't get what you want? Because you're bigger. Uh huh. And um, they're just smart about it. So um, your parents are at home with you every day. But when we talk about the whole world, we say that all of us are God's children. And so God is our parent, just like your mom and dad at home. God is our mom and dad in heaven. So if we want something, but God wants something else, who do you think is going to get what they want? God is going to get what God wants. Um, and so today, we're talking about in the Lord's Prayer, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we pray that, we're praying actually that God would always get what God wants because we know that God loves us and God always wants what's best for us. So that's what we're talking about today. And we, um, when we go, huh, 
we can remember that when things are hard and we don't always get what we want, we have to hope and pray that whoever is getting what they want is doing what God wants to be done, right? Okay, so let's say a prayer together before you um, maybe go over to play in the nursery. Put your hands together, and everybody can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Help me to do your will and love others every day. Amen. Have a great day. Our second scripture lesson today is the same as last week because we are going to be talking about the Lord's Prayer um, each week here um, for a, a period. So we're going to read from Luke again in the 11th chapter. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, When you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us, and don't lead us into temptation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So last week, we began our examination of the Lord's Prayer, um, thinking about the first phrase about why we hallow God's name and how we hallow God's name or uphold the holiness of God's name. Today, we're turning to the second phrase, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Saying this, relinquishes any control we might have over our own lives and summons God's power and control. In praying, thy will be done on earth as in heaven, we admit that we may not know the best or the right things for ourselves or for this world. To pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, is to become a beggar, according to Pope Francis. We place ourselves solely in God's hands, dependent upon whatever God wills and gives. Now, praying thy kingdom come turns us away from any loyalty we had to ourselves or our family or our alma mater or whatever is our natural, comfortable way of thinking and being. And in praying this, it turns us towards God's way of thinking, being, and doing. This phrase reminds us that ultimately, prayer is about aligning our will with God's will. And to do this, to make this alignment, we realize that we need a clear understanding of who God is. Tim Keller wrote that prayer is profoundly altered by the amount and accuracy of the knowledge of God. If God is not the starting point in our prayer, then our emotional needs become the drivers and sole focus of our prayer. Albert Moeller, who you may know is a prominent Southern Baptist, he agrees. He says, prayer is not an act of therapy. Prayer is not first and foremost about us, but about the glory of God. We are not simply trying to find the right formula or a secret code to force God to answer our prayer as we want it to be answered. Prayer does not inform God of what he does not know, nor does it get God to do what he is reluctant to do. Prayer does not change God. It changes us. Whew. Prayer does not change God. It changes us. Our prayer, then, is not or should not be dependent on our wish list or needs but dependent upon God's wish lists and needs. When we come to worship, then, the question at the front of our minds should be, what is God's prayer for today? And how would God have us pray while we are together? 
To know God's desires for our prayer, we invest in our relationship with God. Just as a good marriage is enriched by date nights and pillow talk and spending time with each other, so our relationship with God is enriched by intentional time together. We certainly cannot know God's will without first knowing God. So we read the Bible. We engage in spiritual and theological dialogue with other believers, like what we're doing on Tuesday nights right now, or Bible studies, or maybe family conversation around the dinner table, or a chat with a friend. We spend time actively listening to what God has to say to us, not just talking at God all the time. That's not prayer. Every conversation we have, every verse we read, every conversation we ask leads us deeper into the mystery of who God is. Now, of course, difficulties arise when God's will is different from our own. And we find ourselves pushing back, saying, why hasn't God answered my prayer? Even though it's quite clear that God did answer our prayer, it just wasn't the answer that we wanted. When we pray, thy will be done, we subjugate our desires below the Lord's. We concede that God may have another plan from ours. When we hope for healing and pray, thy will be done, we accept that God's healing may come outside of our own lifetime and understanding. Within our congregation, as we work for vibrant and creative future here at St. Giles, and we pray God's will be done, we also accept that God's will might be done outside of the ways that we want or dream. God's will might be quite uncomfortable. On the other hand, sometimes people misuse the phrase, naming things as God's will that are certainly not God's will. After a terrible tragedy, a premature death, senseless violence, other painful things, people throw around this phrase as if it can console. Or people might say, well, God needed another angel, implying that it was God's will for someone to die. Sometimes power-hungry people use this phrase as an excuse to pursue their own plans on earth. But we see consistently in Scripture that God's will always, always brings life, not pain or death. God's will always moves to healing. There certainly is a power of sin and death in the world, and evil seems to have the last word at times. In God's own way, in God's own time and space, God's will is accomplished, even though we may not have the privilege to see it worked out. When we pray, thy will be done, we are not just pleading for God's action in the present day. If we pray, thy will be done, we are also professing that God has already enacted God's will in the world. God has already been present. It's a statement of evidence, not just a hopeful prayer for the future. God's will was done. Even when we did not see it, even when we did not understand it, even when it seems like evil won the day, we proclaim God's will was done on earth and in heaven, in wartime, in places of abuse, in the most hopeless situations, ultimately, in God's own sense of time and space, God's will was accomplished. And we proclaim this in our creeds, that God's will was complete on earth through Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection. I know the theology here requires a little bit of a time warp in your brain, that God's will is both the already, it's already happened, and it's not yet. It's in the future. So this is why we confess our sins in worship each week, and we also give thanks for the forgiveness already granted us. God's will was done on earth. The Lord's Prayer is not just a recognition of God's will already complete. When we pray, thy will be done, we also call God's will into our present day. 
and we lift up particular people and situations that need God's care and attention. We pray for God's will to be done within our families, for God's will to be accomplished within scientists working on COVID-19 research. We pray for God's will to be done at St. Giles as we carefully steward the resources given us. And we pray for God's will to be done in every bit of minutia of our personal and communal and global lives. We pray thy will be done for whatever is happening at this very moment because we need God here and now. We need God today. The very moment we pray for the present we look to the future for what will be. We pray for healing today in hopes that someone will be made well. We pray for peace in hopes that division or war will come to an end. When we pray God's will be done, we are admitting the frailty of our own nature and celebrating the eternal wisdom that is God. We place our trust in God's will, which is continually moving the world closer to redemption and restoration of our original goodness. Now, what does this mean practically? When you tell someone that you will pray for them, if you pray the Lord's Prayer, you are not praying for what someone else wants but you are seeking God's will to be made known in their lives. God's will, not their own. God's will, which is ultimately in their and our best interest. We do not squish our prayers into our own understanding of time or life, but we lift our prayers into the eternal glory that is God's life and love and grace. And God, in turn, works to bring us into fullness of new life at the highest cost. This phrase, thy will be done, convicted me several years ago. I used to pray for very specific outcomes, that a particular project would go well, you know, with big attendance and lots of goodwill and happy times or that Margaret would be healed by Tuesday morning so that she could participate in her weekly golf game, or that Mark would make friends at school who would sit with him at lunch. That's used, that used to be how I prayed, but now my prayer has shifted a little bit. I really care about the outcomes, and I'm sure that God knows my cares very well. But when I consider these things prayerfully, I hold each prayer request just like I would hold a baby bird, that I gently take each prayer into my heart and I marvel over its details, I lament over the details, and I lift it up into God's presence. Then I rest in silence before God. It's almost as if I'm showing God flashcards of things that wander through my heart. A person, a situation, Peace, hope, healing. Sometimes a picture in the news, just the picture, becomes my prayer. Sometimes a movie sparks my prayer. Sometimes I even find myself praying for things past and things to come. It's not very Reformed, but that's how the Spirit has moved me. Thy will be done is not a sigh of resignation but it is a rallying cry. Thy will be done is a plea for our own participation in the realization of God's intentions in the world. So let us draw closer to God. And as we do so, may our hopes and our prayers be transformed by the knowledge of who God is and who God calls us to be. Amen.
Having heard the word of God read and proclaimed, let us stand and affirm our faith using words from the Heidelberg Catechism. I will ask the questions you are invited to respond with what is printed. What does the second petition of the Lord's Prayer mean? Your kingdom come means rule us by your word and spirit in such a way that more and more we submit to you. Preserve your church and make it grow. Destroy the devil's work. Destroy every force which revolts against you and every conspiracy against your holy word. Do this until your kingdom fully comes when you will be all in all. What does the third petition mean? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven means. Help us and all people to reject our own wills and to obey your will without any back talk. Your will alone is good. Help us one and all to carry out the work we are called to as willingly and faithfully as the angels in heaven. Be seated. So this morning, we want to be remembering some people in um, prayer. Dave Boyd's memorial service was yesterday, and his family is driving back to Indianapolis today. So we want to pray for their safe travels and pray for them and their grief um, while we give thanks for Dave's life and his completion of his baptism. We pray today for Adam and the youth who are either already in Montreat or on their way there. They're going to be there this week for a conference. So we pray for their well-being and their um, energizing at um, a great national conference. We want to pray for Nancy Bowman and for um, Wanda Allison's father, Furman, both of whom underwent surgery this week. Um, Nancy is home, and Wanda's father is still in the hospital recovering. He may be home um, tomorrow. While we are in the midst of this series on the Lord's Prayer, you all are invited to pray whatever version of the Lord's Prayer is most comfortable to you. So that may be in another language, or it may be words different from the people sitting next to you. When we get to that portion of this next prayer, I just want to remind you that you may hear words different from yours, and you should not worry about it. We will all arrive at the Amen, and all will be well. I'm giving you permission to be uncomfortable and loud, okay? <laughs> Let us lift up our hearts together to God. Thank you, God, for the gift of life this day, for the life and breath coursing through our bodies, for the life that pulled us from bed this morning and moved us around and brought us to worship. We give you thanks. We give you thanks that you are always a God of life, always a God bringing new opportunities and new creations, renewing relationships and bringing healing, and for this we give you thanks. We give you thanks that we have seen your goodness worked out in Dave Boyd's life and are grateful that he is now part of the church triumphant. We give you thanks for your healing and your presence with Nancy and Furman, who've been in the hospital, and pray your continued presence with them at home as they recover. We give you thanks for the opportunity for some of our youth and adults to go to this Montreat conference this week and pray that you would be stirring amazing things within their spirit. You would be calling their names loudly, and they would hear you in that sacred space and be transformed so that they could return to us and point to who you are calling us to be together 
however close or far away we may have to move ourselves to get to your voice, we pray that we would have the courage to be your faithful disciples. God, we confess that to pray your will be done on earth is a harder prayer than that of your will be done in heaven. We know that your will is being worked out in heaven, and we want your will to be worked out on earth, but only if that aligns with ours, so that we pray you would humble us. You would clean out our ears and open our hearts so that we could see the places where your will is different from our own will, and then we would be willing to let go of our will and pursue only your will. Not only that, we pray that you would give us a louder voice and a sense of Christian leadership that we could bring others along with us in pursuing your will in our own lives, in the life of our family, in the life of this congregation, and in the life of this community. We know that your will includes justice bringing and kindness sharing and walking humbly and those are hard tasks in this world. Guide our feet, inspire our hearts, that we would always and only follow you. And now, in whatever words that you have taught us, we pray with one spirit, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. God has given us many gifts. Of course, the gift of St. Giles is one of the most precious to us. Um, the gift of St. Giles is an abundant gift from God, and we give thanks. But this gift is our responsibility now to care for. And you are invited this week, today, um, tomorrow, too, to share from the abundance God has given you as we practice stewardship over St. Giles. If you're um, not in the sanctuary this morning, you can follow the QR code on your screen and see ways that you can give to St. Giles. The financial information is also available to you on the screen and in the bulletin. And we invite everyone to share in their gifts of time and talent and treasure as we take care of this church family here. So let us continue worshiping God praying for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we sing in heart and mind soon and very soon.
will you rise, please, and hear these familiar words of the sending. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. God is good. All the time. Your charge this week is to pray God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and also actively pursue God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's a hard prayer. It's a hard thing to do, um, but you have a lot of great tips in the scripture, and the more time you spend with God in scripture and in prayer, you will find yourself inspired so that you can't help but um, to pray and enact God's will on earth as it will be in heaven. As you go out this day, may the love of God surround you, the peace of Christ support you, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit overshadow you this day, now, and forever. Amen. You may be seated.